You're back and just in time for game three where CLG are on match point versus Optic Gaming. They won the first two and the second one looked way cleaner than the first. Yeah, they just came out in game two with a completely different mindset. They gave over the Aatrox showing no fear, grabbed a counter pick, played around top lane, POE got fed once again, really just almost a completely different CLG, completely defensive in game one into the offensive team in game two. And I just love that, you know, how proactive they were with all their engage once they had that, you know, they weren't afraid to, to make plays. Uh, they were playing very, very effectively, you know, around the Camille, especially in that split mm -hmm. push that, that room was kind of opening up. You do have to look over at Optic though and say kind of the lone bright spot there was really the bottom lane. They had that 2v2 kill. They took down first turret with the Draven. So they were able to get something from that. But the rest of the map, it felt like had already collapsed by the time you know the Draven was really involved. Well, as we head into game three here, CLG is going to be back on the blue side. So we'll see mm. what they're able to do here with that. Although it has been one and one for sides winning over the course of this series, remember that for 95% of the total game time, Red Side has been winning. It was just the 5% of that first game that Blue ended up coming back and winning there. So we'll see if CLG has the strategies required to pull it off this time. As you already mentioned, Azale, I think so much of it just was the draft changes in game number two, giving CLG what they needed to take control over the game themselves. But I'm especially going to watch the draft this time around to see what conspires in the top lane because of the fact that Dokla was just destroyed so completely by that counterpick that came out from Room. Yeah, like does COG just leave the Aatrox through knowing they have the counterpick later? Uh, because there is a chance that they could get pinched towards the end of the first phase. But interesting Draven ban right there, because another thing we were going to have to track was uh, how was Arrow going to perform in game three? The player cam we saw towards the end of game two he looked very invested in the game and probably a larger reaction than we almost ever see out of Arrow on player cams as far as his disappointment when he died in one of those final Or anyone. <laughs> Honestly, that was one of the most anguished player cams I've seen. The man was clearly so invested in the state of the game that that was remembered even when they got the ace onto CLG. But just the fact that he died in the process, he knew how much everything in that game mattered. And, and you know that it, that it can be tough, right? You have game number one, you got caught out a number of times, you feel like you want to make up for that. Now all of a sudden you're really strong on the Draven, you feel like you can carry, but you're not finding the opportunities the way it's in. And, and he clearly was very invested in that. A couple of bands from champions that were played last time around. You know, Power Evil gonna have to show us something new as he has played back-to-back -back Azir games. The Aatrox and Draven, which were played last game by Optic, will be taken off the table as well. Akali will continue to be banned away here. We've seen this banned out every single game so far. Nothing's gonna change here in game three. Optic gonna go ahead and file their Yumi taxes early this time around. Get that one out of the way here second as that'll leave the third ban up for them to decide what to keep away from CLG. Seven seconds left. We've been seeing some of these bands tick all the way down till zero on the clock. Looks like Optic are gonna take their sweet time here with this one as well. Final band of the first phase, Sejuani. That was pretty big for Wigley. It is, but it's interesting because J4 Sejuani is often a trade that people yeah. are happy to make. This does open up for a potential first pick J4 with CLG and and then Meteos, you know, perhaps getting pushed down. Silas is up, so maybe that's the trade he would be willing to make, would be a Jarvan for a Silas. And uh, I do think Jarvan would be great for Weekly, though. He's performed well on it. Silas is going to be the choice, though. Yeah, so it leaves Jarvan open. Of course, Silas is fine against Jarvan in most cases. Oftentimes, he can do more damage with the Jarvan ult than uh, Jarvan himself, plus the flexibility of it. So uh, Optic was definitely kind of clearly discussing a lot of what that final ban was going to be. Probably didn't get the most value out of the Sejuani, but we'll see how the rest of the draft plays out. I mean, remember it was Wiggly on Silas that hard carried and ended the three year losing spree that CLG had against TSM. He knows his way around this champion and CLG fans, I'm sure, would love to see him pop off on it here again. But Optic have decided to go for the Zaya as well as that Jarvan that Meteos had a good performance Caitlin on in probably. game number one. Caitlyn locked in, yep. there it is. The Prophet himself. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, I, I think a lot of the draft has made sense so far. You know, I thought CLG might have taken the Jarvan, but for the trade for the Silas, it's just been the mm -hmm. reverse, right? So uh, as soon as you see the Zaya coming in, 
you're essentially blocking most of the good pairings for Zaya. If it's Rakan, you're picking into a counter pick. Nautilus is another common pairing with Zaya, also really, really tough into Morgana. Mm -hmm. You can go a different route, and, and this may be actually a, a karma support, uh, just as, again, poke as the answer to Morgana. Uh, but I still think, you know, it's tough because if you ever get hit by that binding, the trap follows it up and you can get 100 to zero. And speaking of the bindings and the traps working together, it's not just laning phase. I mean, as we go further into the game, we know what Caitlyn can do around objectives to secure them with a line of those Yordle snap traps. And if there's only one way to funnel through and Morgana's got her sights aimed right at it, mm -hmm. turns out there's no ways to funnel through. But going through into the second part of the bands here, the first one Optic's going to get rid of is Skarner. F in the chat. And... That means they're going to be looking to pinch this jungle pool a little bit more just in case that Silas isn't in the jungle and goes into solo lane. Yeah, and the Karma can also be flexible on the side of Optic. Uh, there's a decent chance that that is a mid lane or a top lane Karma, and they still combo with the Rakan. I think it's really interesting that Optic ended up going with Karma there as the third pick before the second ban phase because it's almost daring CLG to ban the Rakan, uh, knowing that it could also flex down to something like Nautilus, or the Karma could just go down there anyway. So really trying to keep as many options open as possible, because I think COG in this final game is just going for lane domination. Yeah. They had the late game with the Sivir Azir first game. They won the second game with the hard initiation. And here, with Opti completely on the back foot, if you can get them down a good amount of gold in the first 10 minutes, the mentor just kind of breaks and COG would walk away with 3-0. Yeah, and, and I mean, I think even some of these bans are, are kind of leading you to believe that they want to be having an isolated 2v2 bot lane, right? You're banning out yeah. the Talia, something that's barely ever played, because you don't want crown running interference. You don't want the Zoe roaming down. Some of these champions that can have a lot of effectiveness, I know Aurelian Soul, though, would be exciting in another roaming <laughs> pick, unlikely to get it. Um, and we'll, we'll see as, as we're likely going to have a, a Jace here locked in for Dokla. So they want to save this last pick for Crown, likely, although, as you said, it could theoretically be that Karma mid. I just don't think it's it's Dokla or Crown style. We've never seen them yep. play the Karma. Crown is traditionally the hard carry. You know, Dokla is traditionally not playing the lane dominant stuff like the Karma. So, you know, I am more expecting it to go to big, but he has no plays on it either. So we will have to find out. Counter Logic Gaming still have those solo laners or potentially jungle to pick up the flex power of the Silas doing its work here. Poppy locked in. Two sides to every lane matchup. We got to <laughs> see Ruin v Dokla's Poppy uh, with Jace on the other side, and we get to switch it up in this game. It is the pick against Jace, and now we'll get to see if Ruin can get some gank support or not get pushed in as much as we saw on the flip side of the matchup. Counter Logic Gaming sitting on this Ari hover here for a while, but probably not going to be the choice. Over to Syndra, and that one's locked in for PoE. Yeah, I think it makes sense. You know, he only has the one play on it so far this split, but you know, it is a fairly safe blind pick. You know, we already see that uh, some of these these kind of go tos for him are banned away from the mid lane, so it uh, should be pretty safe. Oriana would pair very well with the Jarvan, uh, but Corky is still available, and it looks like that is likely going to be the choice here yeah. for Crown. All right, so that means Karma moves down to the support position. I think that does make still a quite quite a strong lane for COG down bottom. There's, depending on if they swap that Silas and Poppy, there's a chance they wouldn't swap the Silas and Poppy because you can do Poppy jungle, although that would be pretty unlikely. Yeah, I would be really surprised. The Poppy, uh, Poppy top lane matchup into Jace. Yeah, exactly. You know, Silas definitely not a great matchup into Jace in the top lane. Um, but the other thing we have to keep in mind is, is I wonder how much emphasis Optic was putting around not actually drafting strong ultimates for Silas, because it doesn't really feel like there's super powerful ultimates mm -hmm. here. You can steal Jace ult and become the range Jace. You know, Cataclysm is pretty nice, but like the Karma ult, the Corky ult, the Zaya ult, all yeah. not very effective. Uh, so really, uh, there's, there's really just the one big ticket ultimate in the Jarvan here for Silas. So they are limiting some of, of Weekly's playmaking power just simply through their draft. Whatever their game plan is, they have to put all the chips on the table for it here. 2-0 for CLG means they are one game away from punching that ticket to Detroit. And in case you missed the introduction to this series in game one, remember that neither of these teams has any points from spring. 
FlyQuest has already secured that bottom spot in the gauntlet after summer has mm. officially ended. And that means that if you lose here, you're done for the rest of the split. Just an added amount of pressure. You want to be able to go to Detroit with the victory. You want the chance at the summer finals, but then also that added cost of losing once again as Optic is in their first ever LCS playoffs and CLG in the playoffs for the first time since 2017. Here we go on to Summoner's Rift for the third and what could be final time of the day. Everybody running out of the gates as soon as they fall. And I think the first thing that catches my eye this time around, Power of Evil, Aftershock Syndra. What about the Predator Jarvan? There's what about Predator wait. Jarvan too, but I was looking at the left side of the screen. I go left to right. What about the I, Conqueror Poppy? I almost feel like, okay, there's no way these <laughs> okay. are right. Okay, There's wait. no way these are right. Are you right. sure? Nope. There's co Comet Crown. Predator Jarvan, yeah, I would be right. really surprised. There's too many weird ones. Uh, even even PTA on, on Caitlyn is a little bit more atypical. All right, as we're waiting to figure out whether or not these are right, and as we're waiting to see if CLG's invade is gonna work, hold on one second, slammed up into the wall and pushed down into the dirt. It's first blood for CLG. And if your mental was already shaken <sighs> from the previous games, Dying to a first blood invade like that is not going to feel good. And as CLG get first blood, Riv is standing by for a sideline report with Weldon. Take it away, gentlemen. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm sorry you just missed the high five between these two. Weldon and Irene are joining me after we saw that first blood. Counter Logic Gaming is playing amazing. We didn't get a chance to talk to you after game one. What kind of was the problem that CLG was finding there that resulted in a win but was a very tough game? Well, we kind of gave up a lot of engage and draft, and so the guys just had to play like really defensively and try to look for you know those really small windows of turns, and uh, that's what we were practicing uh, is being mentally resilient in scrims, and it paid off. Awesome. And then Irene, it's been going well from here. What did you say to the guys coming off stage going into this game? So I think our comp is very consistent at five v five. So we need to group if we possible. So we just push out some wave side, then we just group at the mid, then we are very strong against them, comp. Coaches, thank you very much. Best of luck in the rest of the series. Congrats on the wins. We're going to throw it back to you guys to get in the game. Nice little flash for flash there from Medios. So we have a confirmation they were not the correct runes as, as I expected. <laughs> now they have, have been updated, it looks like, here. So this should be correct. Electrocute makes a lot more sense. Conquer makes a lot more sense. Now there. there's not as much fun stuff to talk about. We could have gone <laughs> yeah, down there a was... whole rabbit hole. Yeah, I and thought we that was be we would have been wrong piece. about it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's fleet footwork on Corky, as expected. Electrocute Syndra, pretty much expected. Conqueror junglers, either way, normal stuff. I do want to touch back on what Weldon Irene said during that interview as well, as far as dealing with mental resiliency and how that actually is a very important aspect of these best of fives. In game one, when they didn't have initiation and they had fallen behind, it does take resiliency, much like it takes resiliency for Optic to come back in this game after giving up first blood. Medios is in position if he can make a play happen. Medios already got one flash there in the mid lane. Now he's going to get a second. Going to get a third. Biofrost trying to turn oh things God. around. Oh! CLG pulled that more off double well. Buffs. Oh. Stick say with double buffs now in the bottom lane. It is a one for one, but they played that right. That takes some guts from Biofrost because he actually didn't flash the initial Jarvan EQ because the whole time they were thinking, let's kill someone. He didn't flash because he wanted the short range binding so he could chain it with the trap, so he could chain it with the Caitlyn headshots. And that's exactly what they did. Even if it's one for one, that is absolutely worth it to get it in a two versus three. Yeah, I mean, this is a huge win. Nice sidestep from Biofrost, then Boom, nails binding. the binding, ignite, W. The Piltover for Peacemaker comes across. Biofrost almost lived as well. And this slow with the red buff, if he actually doesn't get hit by that Q from Big, Arrow gets chased down and killed as well. The kill went to Caitlyn instead of the Karma. Everything is so much better about that. Oh no. Oh, what? That was just so much of Arrow's hell. That may have been even more if Stixay wasn't a little early walking up to turret because he took a turret shot, which delayed his trap place. And that could have been, you know, at least an extra auto for Stixay, and maybe not even force the recall, but he goes back for pickaxe and they try to maintain their lane control. CLG off to a damn fine start here in this third game in a best of five. Stixay still with those double buffs here for a little while longer. 
CLG lane control is all but certain. And you, you do have to know, you know, one of the, the more atypical masteries here is actually the Comet. So Biofrost is going for lane knowledge. This is about the additional poke. And you'll note that that first little trade pattern they had when Arrow TP'd in, that was both his potion charges. So if he gets much more poke onto him, he will have to base, and they are going to lose multiple turret plates. They're going to lose so much CS, so he's got to be so careful under this turret. And this does speak to being flexible as a team for COG. Last game, they were all about playing around Ruins, Kleptomancy, Camille, and the bottom lane had to just withstand. This is completely different in terms of how Stixay and Biofrost are playing. Although the jungle actually hasn't been involved in either one, they actually withstood the 3v2 gank to maintain this dominance from the Caitlyn Morgana. Yeah, everything going so well for their 2v2. You know, we didn't talk about where that first blood gold went either, you know, but that was also a Frostfang purchase, you know, over early on to Biofrost. So he's going to yeah. have his gold really ramped up as well. And when you're pushing his turret, oh man, all big. Oh. Biofrost is just hitting binding after binding after binding in this lane that is able to punish so oh. well. Big just barely gets away from that one. It's a situation where he knows that they're about to walk up to either prep or last hit a minion. So he's throwing their binding where they're going to have to go to last hit that. If you dodge away, you miss the minion. If you don't, you get hit by the binding, you potentially die. Meteos is coming back down bottom side here yet again. He'll clear out the control ward, but considering it was there, that means that's all he'll get. As we take a look up at top side, we haven't really got a chance to discuss this too much, but Ruin doesn't seem to be having a bad time at all against Oka's Jace. Yeah, I really do think that sometimes in the early lane, Poppy has some threat onto Jace, especially if you have some type of vision control. He's playing the lane very well. We haven't actually seen, I don't think, jungle interference nope. or influence on that lane yet, but credit to Ruin for having that. Uh, even to slightly positive CS in that way. We'll see if Dokla can interrupt Ruins back. Yes, he will. Finding his way in the river there to stop that one from getting off in time. Bottom side, though, Stixay and Biofrost are getting so familiar with the real estate around this Optic Gaming turret. They've already taken down a couple of plates. The gold lead growing ever steadily for CLG. Yeah, and Meteos went down there only getting the control ward out. Stixay still had one oh, in his no. inventory. They're well stocked, so they got control of the river. Once again, it's very difficult for Optic to do anything to actually get control of that lane back. Soul laners have used teleport for lane tempo, and how much longer can this turret last? Three plates by seven minutes? Yeah, I mean, that, 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 just even the, the implication of a possible roam meant they had to give up that wave. They had to yeah. back off again. Right, exactly. As soon as Crown tells them, hey, my laner's missing, you guys are going to have to just get out, head to the hills. Nothing good can come of this. There's nothing you can do to try to defend it. Crown going to be leaving the lane himself, now heading towards the bottom side river with Meteos to clear out some of this vision. Just try to retake a little bit of control over the bottom part of the map. Meteos still only level 5. Wiggly here level 6. But again, the Silas doesn't have a ton of good ultimates to steal. He will be looking for Meteos to try to steal the Cataclysm away if he can. Meteos has found his way into the enemy jungle to steal that red buff now. Pretty good invade by Meteos. All things considered with the bottom lane going the way it has to actually make it in there. Still behind in experience though because he has had to spend so much time in transit. Well, he'll pass off the blue buff now over to Crown who will be happy to spam some more rockets. His top side, Dokla was able to get that CS lead back pretty well for himself after he TP'd back into the lane. Ruin is still looking for this 1v1. He pops the ulti but it won't do a whole lot here for him. Should buy him the opportunity to shove this out. Get himself a decent back, picks up his shield, and Dokla's still trading, but considering that Jace doesn't have a lot of mana left to work with, Ruin's not that afraid, and CLG says, hey, you know what? We have all this bottom side control. Let's grab that trick. Nice turn. Yeah, speaking of Ruin, he plays lanes so aggressively, sometimes to his detriment. He's most likely, I think, of the top laners in the LCS now to either get a solo kill or be solo killed because he'll take a lot of those 50-50 all-ins against opponent laners uh, with the attempt about playing it. And when you're up 2-0 in a series, I think that's a great mentality to have because yeah. the other guy's just been beaten twice in a row and is more likely to give you some of that uh, ground, so to speak, when you play very aggressively. And especially when you're coming off the back of that Camille game, you know, yeah. it's, it's going to be in the back of Dokla's mind, like, oh, God, I can't let this happen again, right? I've got to be careful. I've got to make sure that he doesn't get these advantages. And meanwhile, you know, when you're playing that aggressive on the top side with a winning bot lane, if their jungle comes top, you can get objectives on the bottom side. Syndra is pushing up mid. Mm -hmm. Bot is winning very heavily in the 2v2. That's what allowed them to take that dragon. 
And if you show top for a potential gank, there's always the chance that they could then dive your bottom lane. Speaking of bottom lanes, Biofrost, the only man left on the map without level 6. We'll see when that Morgana ult that comes online here. Shouldn't take too much longer. He's about 90% of the way up to that 6th level. And there we go. That one's picked up as the minions are collapsed upon. We'll see if either of the junglers make a move towards there. But right now, nobody's even close. Wiggly decides to hand that buff over to Syndra, who does what only Syndra can do and just yoinks it away, slams it into the ground. Corky package won't find much. Usually early game they don't. And Crown heads back mid to farm up, shove that wave in, waiting for his opponent to come back. Yeah, and you'll notice that uh, Biofrost already completed his sight stone. You know, that ticked over about 20, 30 seconds ago. So very fast sight stone completion. That is one of the big advantages of actually getting an early frost bang is you get access to those wards earlier, which then allows you to have more safety when you are in this pushing position. You can get those deep wards out on the map, river wards, you know, next time he goes back to base and, and then protect himself. Oh, but here comes Optic. Whoa. They're looking for the 2v2, but Biofrost says, here you go! Oh. Stixe grabs himself to kill the ace in the hole. The ace up their sleeve, CLG, popping off in the bottom lane. Continuing to dominate that laning phase, Biofrost uses the stopwatch to its best ability. And because everything showed bottom lane, Ruin just continues to get damage out onto Dokla. <laughs> no plates at all from Dokla's Jace early on in this game. Can't stop be the poppy. Bottom side arrow will defend himself underneath the turret. He has help waiting nearby in case CLG gets real frisky and tries to go for the dive, but they see there's no reason to do that. They are low on mana for sticks. They low on health for Biofrost. He'll go back to the base, start working on that arm guard. Let's take another look at the 2v2. Okay, this is one more time. Nice route from Arrow onto Stixe, but Biofrost just goes forward onto both of them. Does not even need the Binding Ultimate Ignite. More than enough with the ultimate coming through there from Stixe to kill off Big. Really well played there. And yeah, and Poppy is actually taking a turret play herself. So, I mean, this is a matchup where Poppy certainly can do well in the early levels before Jace has items to armor shred and sustain through. But generally, it still results in Poppy farming pretty well and trading okay, and Jace pushing you in. Yeah. Right? It, it's it, This is the extreme opposite. When we <laughs> saw the reverse matchup, Ruin was was still at least having Dokla at his turret, and you know that is really where you want to have it. Yeah, now we have Ruin actually down in CS, but up in pressure <laughs> with Poppy versus Jace. So just a, a different mindset than a lot of the other top players. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're seeing him utilize his tackle to actually tackle range minions to throw the grasp passive yeah. onto the Jace, right? So he is trying to play in his face and constantly trade him down, and, and I think it, it really is taxing sometimes to play against those players. It's like, you're not even going to go for the minion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're both missing CS here. Just farm. I'm going to drag you down with me. That's the ruined attitude, but it's working here so far in this third game. Power of Evil finding himself a nice trade onto Crown, who, when he's dropped down to 60% HP like that against a mage like Syndra, man, you got to be careful. You misstep one time, you're in some trouble. Yeah, Crown showing a lot of respect to Power of Evil as well, starting with the Hex Drinker. That will greatly delay his Trinity Force. Meanwhile, PoE has the free boots and the Ludens, but here comes Wiggly. They're looking to crash. All right, bottom side. Big and Arrow once again going to be the target. Oh, Misty. Big manages to get himself away for a moment. Wiggly will likely die here. Flashes over the wall into Meteos's waiting arms. And Crown teleports in, so four people invested down bottom lane for Optic in the one for one. And here we go again with the Poppy. <laughs> Use all your spells. This Fight. is the most aggro Poppy I have ever seen in my life. He's looking for Dokla. He's not going to find him just yet. Throws down another one of those slams and disengages. Yeah, Rune is just playing this so aggressively, and they're going to get the first turret on the bottom side. It was a one for one trade. Kill him. Arrow! Oh, See you no. later! Killing spree for Stick Ah, uh, I feel bad for Arrow in this one. It's certainly been a, a frustrating series for him, and now bot lane is just completely spinning out of control. Look at how much farm Stix has. We're at 1340 into the game. He's at basically 150 CS. Basically a 50 CS lead. Took the turret. He's up over 2,000 gold. This is just an absurd advantage, and Caitlyn is, has such an easy time you know, really making good on those those leads because she has so much range. Yeah, Stixay and Biofrost really taking control of this game. I don't even really think Wiggly has too much to say about this. This has been 2v2 or 2v3 in a lot of situations. PoE's got to find a way out of this, and he's fine. Yep, he had Flash even if he didn't have backup coming, but with Biofrost and Stixay on his heels, 
he knows that there's no way Optic chases that any further. Yeah, they're probably gonna try and look towards this Drake as well. Optic looks like they might be trying to force something knowing that they're just getting poked out over and over by this Caitlyn, but it's just gonna make it from bad to worse. Yeah, problem is you don't force something onto a Caitlyn team around a neutral objective. I mean, Pyrofrost is actually closing in on gold with Crown. He's, he's 400 gold behind the mid laner as the support. Wow. He almost has a Zonius. He's actually going to have a Zonius on base. He will have his first completed item before the opposing mid laner. He has this more gold insane. than his top laner. He's got more gold than Ruin. <laughs> Who's been playing aggressively the whole game? <laughs> yeah, Biofrost oh and Stixa. He is fed. Looking to make their way into semifinals with a dominant performance. They were both second team on the all pro voting this split, so getting the respect of a dominant bottom lane as well, and really making it work here in this game. I mean, Biofrost was who I saw as the catalyst for this team when they first started popping off. Remember, CLG has been in a pretty bad spot for a couple of years now. They yeah. haven't been in playoffs for a while. They were struggling with seemingly everything. And in this split, things changed. And Biofrost and Stixay have been one of the huge catalysts. Remember, back in Spring Split, this was not a bottom lane that people were like, wow, what the hell are these guys yeah. doing? Because it is impressive. But now here in summer, they're popping off. Seven wins, 11 losses. Every split prior to this one, the Biofrost was on CLG. Even though it was a CLG curse, sometimes Biofrost might have thought it was himself being cursed. And Stixay as well, at one point, was the replacement to Doublelift, is the eldest member of this CLG team, actually the team leader all time for kills in playoffs, trying to have a big performance. Yeah, and 6 is, is the only player on CLG that was, was in playoffs last time CLG was in playoffs, right? Like, mm -hmm. he's the only guy remaining from that last CLG roster. You know, they have had this, this resurgence, and yeah, Rune came in this split, but it hasn't just been about the improvements that Rune has brought. It's been about 6A and Biofrost really stepping up, as you guys were mentioning, and Wiggly, his rapid improvement. You know, we heard earlier in the split, 6A talking about how fast he got good, and it really has been a sight to see. All right, Ruin's gonna find himself in a 1v2. He'll slam Meteos up against his own wall. He'll knock Doklo away, and then he says, nope, I'm not running, I'm the Poppy. And he keeps on fighting and forces Optic to retreat. Oh, and they went for that fight. I think, okay, surely he at least flashes, right? But nope. no, he stalls enough, knocks Doka out. Biofrost is also there to save the day. And now they can just move that Caitlyn pressure top to get the third turret before 17 minutes. CLG is looking to make this the fastest game of the series so far. All three outer turrets dismantled. Shelly now on the menu. Wiggly putting the work in on that one. Shouldn't need too much more time to get rid of it, especially not with Stick Stixay showing up. Of course, we'll see if they can get much. They have to aim at those tier twos. Power of Evil here on the bottom side. Brown looking to find the plays. Power of Evil with a fast beat. Dog oh. in the way again. The man's got his dancing shoes oh. on. Crown really wanted that. Uh -oh. They need something, and Ruin is now behind him. Crown is going to get taken out. Here comes the puppy. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Power of Evil takes the kill. POE definitely tempting fate a bit by picking up that kill. Actually means Ruin doesn't get the assist gold either, but it's got to feel good just for the mano a mano yeah. POE versus Crown dodging all the skill shots <laughs> to eventually get the kill. Mono a mano plus flanking Toppy. Yeah, yeah no, 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 it's 1v1, <laughs> still okay. Don't worry about the world. It's never a what fair fight, Jack. It's never a fair fight. <laughs> the Poppy, Poppy didn't matter there. No damage doesn't count, but top side. <laughs> Wiggly's going after Dokla here, and a chase with no mana is not exactly a match for a Silas. There comes the accelerated shock blast, but Dokla's like, nope, I'm wise to these tricks, steps out of the way, and that won't go any further. 6,000 gold and the Mountain Drake. It's also going to transition into Baron, but remember, they also have the Rift Herald, so I think they're either just going to use it right now top lane. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Since they chucked out Dokla to get this second turret. Well, here goes Power of Evil, making sure he's around to continue helping Shelly take this down. Meanwhile, Biofrost and Wiggly are just waiting here in the brushes to the south of that turret. In case anybody tried to rotate up, they were going to stop them. But instead, they'll take down a tier 2 top, they'll take down a tier 2 mid. Shelly's a little bit distracted bonking these minions, but she's about to get They're another charge off and nobody just keep stops going. it. Yeah. Everybody from Optic is just not ready to defend this right now. And with Caitlyn and Karma being here as well, that's a tier 3 turret down before 19 minutes. Stick stays on the front line. Black Shield keeping him oh. safe. And once again, Poppy doing what she does, getting rid of unwanted problems. They're just taking so many towers. Six towers pre-20 minutes is ridiculous. 
and they are in such an incredible position to close out this game here. 6 is sitting on 9,000 gold, you know, sitting 3,200 ahead of Arrow. Like, that is, that is absurd. That is so far ahead. Arrow's never going to really have any relevance in this game. I mean, Biofrost has more gold than he does. Yeah, Stixie is a full big ticket item up over his opponent, which is pretty incredible when you consider the fact that last game, it was CLG who got 2v2 killed for the first blood. It was CLG yeah. who mm -hmm. were losing the bottom lane and gave Optic their potential only win condition. Now they're saying, oh no, we're going to do this our way as Power of Evil gets Dove Meteos' way, a shutdown for Optic Gaming. Crown brings his friend this time, able to get the dive, but let's see what COD can do. Oh, oh. another one, just dial 1-800-B-I-N-D-I-N-G, and Biofrost makes them happen time and again. <laughs> I like that. That was good. <laughs> uh, it's the binding. They get the kill. Crown will take a tower down on the bottom side, but CLG have full control of the map right now. You know, going to be able to, to be taking away camps in the top side jungle up here, as Wiggly is doing it, and they are really poised to do whatever they want to close out this game. Yeah, progression of this series was Optic coming out with the Sneak Baron at 20 minutes in game one, eventually getting four Barons, four Drakes, an Elder on top of it, and not quite being able to close. During that game, when there are still so many unknowns in this series, you think, hey, this could be real close. Stixay, though, might get caught out here. Meteos he is going after Stixay. He made sure he took an extra half second there when he stood by the wall. You saw it to make sure that Flash would Boys, get away to safety. Been here. But Optic is not done. They really, really want this Caitlyn. Meteos is going to tank the turret as long as he possibly can. Shutdown goes over to Optic. They'll pick up a second on the power of evil. They've lost big for it, but it's still a big win for Optic. Yeah, that's a nice play from Optic at a time where they really needed something. Yeah. They will commit to this. They're they're going to lose a, a tower or at least some health on it on this bottom side, but I still think it's a worthwhile play. You have to be aggressive. You can't just sit back and let them bleed you out. Yeah, compared to how the series had been going with just every game getting worse for Optic and then being down 7,000 gold, the two plays they've made, one in the bottom side and this in the top side, do keep them alive. They get 6 A's flash and then they continue to pile on to get him. And because Power of Evil came to save him, he ends up falling as well, even if it's a two for one. And considering the cost of that was only a little bit of damage on a side turret, it's almost miraculous that they didn't lose more map pressure for committing everyone to that stick safe play top lane. I'm sure in VOD review for COG, they might even say, how did we let the game get into a point where Optic could even make these plays? Because it's so yeah. unexpected with that big of a goal lead, but Optic does find a way to stay alive in this game. 5,000 gold at 22 minutes. Well, Stixay's got himself three crit items online here for the Caitlyn. Very scary with rapid fire and static shiv together. Wiggly about to walk up towards Meteos here. They were expecting someone oh. to be in the brush, but Meteos gets himself away. That was almost so sick from Biofrost. Anticipated where the flagging drag would go, but was just short. If you hit that, that could be a kill on the jungler and potentially a Baron. That would have been a massive pick, but you know, Optic has slowed down the game a little bit. You know, yep. Crown has taken down now top tier one, bottom tier one with his split push. They got a couple kills. They have scraped their way back a little bit closer. CLG certainly still by far in the driver's seat here, but we have to see them continue to push the pace of the game because if you allow the gold lead to stagnate, uh, Optic will have their chances. Yep, Corky could scale up. Zai as well could start catching up to Sticks, even though he's not even it's close. It's a long but. road. Yeah, here they go, though, just trying to get the outer six down. They have the people, so they should be able to do it with no contest. Yep, don't even need to sit down the trap line here just yet, and they're going to keep pushing until Optic responds to it with an appropriate amount of manpower. Wiggly's clearing out the jungle camps as he makes his way towards the rest of his team. And this is where difficulties will start. Even when you're really far ahead, it can be difficult to break that inhibitor line, except, oh, wait, what's that? The it's inhibitor down. line was broken at 19 minutes. <laughs> well, hot dog. Let's see what they can find here in the mid lane. CLG going to continue that pressure. Optic Gaming have to find something to grab onto, some way to hold on to this game. Yeah, and the threat through these turrets is so great because if they do just land that one binding, it's going to be actually anyone else but Jarvan's full health bar as they knock him out and get a bunch of damage out onto this turret. Well. There were a couple auto attacks and spells fired off into Ruin here, but now he's not in any danger oh. whatsoever. Crown goes on a suicide mission, barely gets himself away. 
Optic tries to find their angle, but just can't do it. They at least do push them back and defend the inhibitor tower, though. But Baron on the map here you know, is becoming more and more of a target. As they're getting tankier and tankier, the Poppy is, is, is getting to the point where she's going to be able to, to hold that pretty easily. And they can look to set up around that Baron area. Optic does have some defensive vision, you know, on that side of the map, trying to kind of protect themselves, you know, just in this little quadrant. But really, if CLG can move up into this area and start to get some vision down, they can pull Optic into them and, and utilize the Caitlyn traps to try to force them to engage through that. Yeah, and I think Meteos has to play so well here. He is the only person who can control vision because additionally, since he has the most health, he also has the Jarvan EQ, which if he's casting it at the right time, can still move through a dark binding. So he's the one that needs to get vision and he needs to escape catches like this. And not get smacked up against oh, the wall. Yeah. Biofrost has him with a burn, but at the same time, Optic critically give one in trade. Power of Evil out of the picture. Pretty important here. Dixay also eating a ton of damage and Ruin has finally gone too far. Forced to flash out defensively. A nice route onto Big. Ace in the hole will be denied as Ruin takes the kill with a hammer shock. Little ring around the rosy there. Ruin runs all the way around the red buff back in and they're able to take down Big. But it was a good pick onto Power of Evil. Optic yeah. are taking their swings where they can find them. You know, they're trying to fight back into this game. And the pick on Amidios, again, could have been Baron if it weren't for a nice little trade kill from Optic. But again, here we have CLG just straight up starting the Baron. Arrow what didn't reset, have. though, so he is here to at least see it. Meteos, though, as he died, can't make it for a smite. CLG have everybody here. They're ready to go. Baron down to about 1,500, and it is secured by the Silence. Wiggly on point to make sure they don't give that one away. Dokla forced to flash away from Stixay's red buff, and now CLG are ready to go. Five men with Baron buffs. Everybody's regrouping, and it's time for a big push. And that could very well be the death knell of Optic in this series with that Baron buff, with the Caitlyn to Siege, and this huge gold lead, CLG should be able to march down the map and deal crippling damage to Optic's base. Yeah, watching this fight one more time, Meteos is actually on the way to set up this pick onto Power of Evil, so the bottom left of your screen, you actually see Crown and Big on that control word, but Meteos can't get out fast enough with his EQ. And this is actually where Optic saw an opportunity to kind of turn the game around. It's just Rune is so darn tanky that he's able to flash to the side and Big doesn't realize there's a trap right there. It's kind of hidden behind his own control ward and he's so squishy once he steps on that trap. Yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous that they couldn't actually take Ruin down yeah. there. It shows how strong he is at this point in the game. He just ran all the way around the rev to be involved and Dokla is building for this 1v1. You can see, you know, he has gone Blade of Rune King, Cleaver, Lord Dominix. This is straight up to try to fight this Poppy, but Rune really has been getting more done and here comes CLG looking to siege up with this Baron on the bottom side. CLG not even concerned about the exposed mid lane inhibitor. The initiation from Optic makes an attempt on Stixay, but they won't be able to find oh. him. And Arrow is slam dunk before he can ult or flash. Ace in the hole makes its way in. Crown is out. And CLG are on the victory march. Two down, both carries, two inhibitors coming up, and CLG looking to make it a 3-0 and punch their ticket to the semifinals. There comes your initiation. Syndra starting things off with the scat of the week. There comes your juggle. There goes Optic Gaming. Stixay's got a double kill. The Nexus turrets will fall to the might of CLG. They're just playing with their food at this point. Big, he'll try to stay alive underneath the fountain. It has been a long time coming, but CLG are headed to the semifinals. And what a series it was. CLG clean sweep over Optic. Optic really made him work for it in the first game. CLG having to come yeah. back in that one, but games two, games three were all CLG all the time, it felt like. You know, they really ran Optic over. And thinking about how CLG got here, they were so close to getting the playoff bye. There was that fear oh, yeah. in the back of CLG fans' heads that maybe we won't get the bye and then we could lose to Optic and then we won't make regional qualifiers. That's gone now.
right? It's hopeful looking towards the next round, looking towards trying to win the split or go to Worlds. And the way in which they won the series also speaks towards continual improvement. Right, and considering in the next round, you play either Team Liquid or Cloud9, you wanted to make this win look as clean as possible. Yes, game one was a little bit rough, but Weldon even said they addressed the fact that, yes, they drafted bad initiation tools, and that's why. Games two and three looked really clean, and this is a team I am excited to see in semifinals. Yeah, me too. I think they're going to be a very tough opponent for whoever awaits them. You know, TL does have the yeah. choice. I cannot really see a world in which TL would not choose Clutch. I, I think we're very likely going to be in for CLG versus Cloud9, and that was the tiebreaker for the buy. They will have a chance to get their revenge. Redemption story potential there for CLG, but man, how cool must it feel for this team that, as we said, has been on the struggle bus for the last couple of years after being one of the big North American orcs. But since way back in the day, the start of competitive League of Legends, they've been in that trench for so long now, but they're back up, they're fighting, and damn, they look strong. The it's long road do. forward, man. It's just so much, especially for Biofrost, who had been so dominant when he joined the League on TSM, really knew nothing but winning, to then kind of Felt like he kind of became the face of CLG when he became that, uh, when he started on support for that team. Mm -hmm. And we have to just look at the other side, the end of the road for Optic, Arrow as well. Tough series, played so well in so much of that game too, but also the critical picks on Ezreal in game one. Getting, having to lane against that Caitlyn Morgan at the end of game three. You got the thrill of victory on CLG and you have the agony yeah. defeat on Optic. That's sports, and that's one of the reasons I love to watch. It absolutely is. Two sides of that same coin. But for Optic Gaming, you still got to be proud of making it to playoffs here for the first time. They got to the quarterfinals. That in and of itself is an achievement. They can only continue to improve from here, you would expect, with this experience. As Zabutin said, this is a squad that didn't have that playoffs experience, playing in the best of fives, experiencing that different environment in a live game setting as opposed to just a scrim. Now they've kind of got a feel for that. For some of these players that haven't got to do that yet on the LCS yeah. stage, that's pretty big. Yeah, you know, Big and, and Dokla, you're going to get some experience mm -hmm. with them. You know, obviously a lot of experience between Medios and, and Arrow and Crown. Right. But, you know, certainly, you know, it is really, really valuable for all of these guys to be gaining as much experience as possible. And, and we have seen improvement throughout Optic, which is something they can build upon. Well, as CLG managed to grab themselves an impressive 3 0 victory, Avli is standing by with their support and mid laner. Thanks, Flowers, Biofrost, Power of Evil. Congratulations on the victorious win for CLG. POE, I want to come to you first and ask just how does it feel to take this win? Because not only did your 3-0 Optic, your former team, that you just weren't able to end up carrying into playoffs. So how does it feel to take that down this team? Well, I really like all of the Optic squad still. And um, we spoke a little bit before the match. And it was kind of sad that we faced the first team in playoffs. But I feel like after the first game, I don't know how we won with this draft. Um, I'm really happy about it that we like turned it around and got the win. And I feel like after that, we just had the momentum and we just kept it going because I feel like all of us are veterans and I feel like we have so much experience on our back that like I feel like uh, it wasn't that hard afterwards. And I saw you give hugs to almost every single player on the line. Is, were there any exchanges that you had before or after the game? Well, I just uh, told them that like they shouldn't be too upset about it. I feel like we are still like France and Optic and even between the games we spoke a little bit and I think Arrow came to me after the 2-0 and was like we're gonna make it 2-1 like we're gonna make you fight for it and oh, it was really fun. It was Bible really cute. <laughs> Bible pump. Bible pump. Bible pump, definitely. Oh, gosh. Well, Biofrost, okay, let's come to you next because it's been, what, two years since you were last in playoffs, and now here you make your appearance in quarterfinals and have this dominating victory. So what does this all really mean to you? Uh, feels great. I get to keep my 100% playoff win rate. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it, it does mean a lot because when you play like really poorly or like when you're not doing well as a team for a while, like it's been three splits, you start to doubt yourself. So I'm really happy that we can make it this time around. And I think we got a good squad. Well, let's talk about the series itself because I just want to ask about your progression of confidence because in game one, super long, looked like it was going to optic. Game two, the game really started to look like it was yours. And in game three, you started off with a level one invade. So just tell me a little bit about that. Well, I feel like we didn't need to show too much variety uh, in, this, in like the series because we just 3 them. But uh, I feel like 
we definitely showed some what uh, some strategies like the level one invade or um, I feel like as well like the level one I feel like I mean like, sorry the first game where we just fought until the end I feel like uh, we just kept reminding ourselves okay give up the Baron it's the fourth Baron just give it up again <laughs> <laughs> give it up again we have Azir and uh, maybe they will step up and then Rexa can flash on someone so we have every five minutes a small winning condition so we just spoke about these things and we actually made it work so I feel like it shows that we like a really strong team. And I noticed that you said you showed off some strategies. Does that mean that there are still some secret strategies ready for the rest of playoffs? Well, definitely. Like We didn't need to show too much uh, today, so that's uh, really good for us. Bauerfaust, looking at you, it seemed like in the last game you were hitting almost every single binding as Morgana. So what really flipped the switch on for you and Stixie in the bot lane in this series? Um, was definitely tired of getting camped and bot and playing these really bad matchups. So we finally got a good situation for us, and I'm glad that we were able to show it. We're pretty confident in like, lane dominant champions, so it really worked out for us. All right, and I just got news. You guys are going to hear it first. Team Liquid chose Clutch Gaming as their semifinal opponents, which means that you are going to be taking on Cloud9. So, gentlemen, first reactions. Uh, well, for me, I feel like that's a little bit more annoying. I think Cloud9's mid genre is really strong, and it's just more annoying for me. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I think that TL is probably the better team. They've gotten first, they have MSI experience. So playing against Cloud9 is definitely easier, but that's not to say that they're really, they're still a really strong team. And in the tiebreaker, we just absolutely got decimated. But I think that's probably because of draft and we had some bad communication uh, in the game. So I think we'll be, it'll be much closer this time around. And a lot of people were saying, this is mainly Twitter and Reddit, but you know, people were saying, you know what, I wonder if Biofrost's uh, playoff success is based off of his performance or just double lift his lane, his lane partner. Oh. So uh, are you going to prove them wrong in the semifinal and potentially meet up against Team Liquid in the finals? No, it's just double lift. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Vincent! <laughs> Vincent! <laughs> Vincent! <laughs> confidence! I'm just joking, I'm just joking. I'm okay. No. It's okay. All right. Well, gentlemen, any last words to the fans before you start your week of preparation? Well, I'm happy for everyone who came out here, supported us today, and just over the last couple of weeks, I think uh, we were all a little bit sad that we didn't make it to semifinals, but just made it 3 all today, and now we're back there. Words of confidence, Vincent. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, team. Let's go. Guys, once again, congratulations on the win. And for more on the game, let here from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you, Avali. Let's go. go. <laughs> the trail off Let's Go to right, Detroit. Comp, yeah. Are you inspired now to go play some League of Legends? No. Uh, in all honesty, that was a smash uh, oh, yeah, for yeah. CLG, and the, and the series got progressively more dominant for them uh, after that first game where, uh, where Power of Evil kind of sided. They were hanging in by a thread with a five-minute cool-down win condition of the Rek'Sai Flash, which would come up big. But uh, this third and final game here was much more the look that we expect out of CLG with the strong body. I mean, this is the kind of stomp that means that uh, we might not even get to see off to get to book scrims against CLG for a little while. It, it really was so one-sided because the lane dominance from the early get-go, the approach to the level one as well, finding an invade, and then it just felt like Optic was asphyxiated. They couldn't do anything. I mean, they're definitely not going to be scrimming for a while because Optic is out yeah. <laughs> completely. So oh, wait, this, it. this was nice. such an unlucky yeah. invade because Big barely missed this, and Arrow's positioning barely missed it until they're right on top of him. Like I thought, God, this would not happen. Like nine out of ten scrims, like nine out of tw like. 19 out of 20 scrims, but it still did. This is such a nice sidestep from Biofrost to actually get the return kill, because otherwise this is really just you flash out, okay, the jungler ganked you, but you turn the gank, and you get double buffs to the Caitlyn, it's over, the lane is done. 3v2 situation, and then yes, as you mentioned, it's over from that point forward. Uh, Stixay would become an absolute monster uh, on the Caitlyn. With the early gold lead, the turret pushing, comes all that much easier. And Arrow just, he just walks back up, thinks he's safe, and Six Day walks up and just kills him. He has IE at this point, right? Yes. It's, it's like IE to a few long swords or maybe even a BF sword. Uh, this is like Dyer. a very classic Caitlyn game. Like when you get choked out by Caitlyn, you lose your bot tower, rotates top, lose your top tower, mid tower, and then it's just over. All your towers are gone, they rift tail top, top for the second tower, and it just felt like CLG had an enormous lead. They took a 19 minute inhib. Tower in him. I yeah, think. it was just a the in him Her, tower. The yeah. in him tower yeah. mid. And it was just came over. down pre nineteen minutes. Yeah, it, it was it was like you know optic kind of 
got their back broken off basically that level one invade and the, and the Meteos death. Uh, even on the top side of the map where they should have had their priority with the Jace and the Poppy, still just really couldn't get anything going. I think, you know, Rune had a massive 4%, even took a couple turret plates by himself. Yeah, yeah, he had almost two turret plates, like literally one auto away from yeah. getting the second one before the 14 minute mark. And as you mentioned, he was a largely even in CS with what seemed like an advantageous forward percentage against the counter matchup of the Jace. Yeah, and it's not something that Optic usually finds leads on, putting Dokla in a carry as well. So you know that if that's where they are having to fall back to get anything in this game, something has gone wrong. It really is like, it did not come together for Optic at the very last minute. They fell apart, but I cannot wait to see CLG against Cloud9. I know. They were saying that, you know, of, uh, you know, of course, TL is the scarier team of the bunch, but knowing that they'll go up against C9, not an easy task, but definitely feel like they are capable of beating that squad, citing the tiebreaker loss, saying more draft and communication errors that resulted in that loss. But in talking about this victory here today, to sweep their way to the semifinals, every player needed to step up. And when it came to player of the series, that accolade is going to go to the mid laner, Power of Evil. This felt to me like one of the closest player of the series we ever had to give out. Every single game, a different member of CL, uh, CLG was the primary carry. It was Wiggly in game one with the Flash Rex on berries. It was Power of Evil and uh, uh, Rune in game two having all the big plays. Azir and Camille, yeah. Yeah, and in game three, it's the bot lane. So, you know, you could take your pick of any game depending on which one you wanted. POE, we felt like, was the most consistent player throughout the series, mm -hmm. and that's why we ended up giving it to him. Yeah, I think CLG just shows the traits of a good team. Anyone on their team can carry. I, I, liked, I said that at the very start of the cast, but you guys could hear me, I said it to these other analysts, I was like, hey, you know, T CLG right now is kind of what you expect TSM historically to be at the end of, of the season, you know? Near, near playoffs, like, TSM kind of co comes together, all their pieces start working together, and they gel together like a machine. That didn't happen this season, but you know what happened for? CLG. And CLG mm -hmm. finally, on the rise after, like, I don't know, a year or two bad years, they're finally back. And to your point, Mark, while we could acknowledge any of the five members on CLG, the one that we will give an additional nod to behind Power of Evil is Wiggly in his first LCS playoff performance, gets the 3-0, and is very crucial in that first game turnaround, which really kickstarted momentum. And you know, that's just a story of CLG the whole split long. We look at the team and think, okay, who should really be the MVP, the standout? But so many members continue to step up, and that's what reaffirms in us that it's a legit team, that CLG is actually a good team. Every single member is carrying their own weight. And when you thought, oh, maybe Styx is, maybe it's not him, right? He's struggling in the first two games. Suddenly he turns it around in the bottom lane. Same thing with Biofrost, PoE, Ruin, and Wiggly. Like this is an actual team that doesn't seem to have a weak point to exploit. And so a team to beat them has to come up with a better plan than finding whatever isn't working for CLG. They pick up each other's slack too, which is really what you want to see out of a team. When, when the bot lane is getting smashed by this Draven, like don't worry. You have Rune and POE <laughs> 100 CS work. lead on the Camille top yeah. lane, yeah. Uh, without a doubt, it's great to see that from CLG. And we'll be back to talk about this a little bit more, but for more on his first quarterfinal win in the LCS, let's send it over to Riv to hear from CLG's jungler. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And I do kind of want to start right there, Wiggly. What Dash was saying is that first quarterfinal matchup now in the LCS, it's been a long year, but improvement throughout. What were your expectations coming into this playoff match? Oh, uh, well, I think all of our expectations were that we were going to win, uh, honestly, but obviously getting 3-0 is always like a nice surprise, but I guess for me it wasn't really a big surprise, but I guess <laughs> it's just good to get the 3-0, obviously, but yeah. I'm, our expectations. <laughs> I'm sure it surprised a few. It's been kind of turmoil back and forth with CLG being able to make it into the later part of the season, but something was different about the atmosphere throughout the year. A lot more fun, smiling faces, even throughout this 3-0. What has kind of changed for the CLG atmosphere that's allowed this? Uh, well, we win now, so <laughs> I guess winning kind of fixes everything in a way. Um, when you're a better team, it's just easier to have fun with your teammates, I think. And obviously, like, outside of the game, everyone gets along really well, too, so that helps. But the biggest thing is we're just winning and we're a good team, so, yeah. It's easy to have fun. All right, Wiggly, this one, next one's about you. We've heard a few of the teammates that you have talking about your maturity and how that has leveled up so much throughout the season. Kind of from your point of view, what has that growth been and what's different for you? Uh, I think that I just try to model my game, like, behind other good junglers and I just tried to look at other what other people are doing and what things I struggled with last split and yeah it's just uh with the help of the coaching staff and my teammates I think that I just kind of figured out some of the things that I was struggling with last split and 
you know, sometimes it just takes time to get used to the environment, playing on stage, your teammates, everything as a jungler. So I think that was really helpful for me. Well, it seems like everything's coming together to get that past result CLG has found in the finals. Final question for you. It has been Cloud9 that you are going up against. We just found out. You get a little bit of revenge for that bye tie. How do you feel about the matchup? Uh, I think that it'll be a really fun match to watch. Uh, our last game with them didn't really go how we planned. It was kind of a, a really sad way to end the split, but I don't think the games are going to look like that. Uh, I think that was kind of a one-off type of game. So I think it's going to be a really close series. It should be fun. Wiggly, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck moving forward, and best of luck to all of the CLG fans who are hoping we're going to throw back to the State Farm Analyst desk to break down the rest of the day. Thank you, Riv, and congratulations again, Wiggly, on your first quarterfinal win here in the LCS. Citing that, a lot of his improvement was modeled off of other good junglers. I would be very curious, one, to know who he modeled himself after. But beyond that, let's acknowledge... Oh, do you, are you really? You just, oh yeah, my God. Get off of my desk. Uh, no, I was going to say, because really, what's interesting to me is that he is about to go into one of the toughest jungle matchups of his career in Sven Skarin, Cloud9 semifinal matchup. That's going to be a big one. With all of our final teams competing at the Little Caesars Arena, we are locked into the top four. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bigger picture for the road to Detroit, presented by Rocket Mortgage. As we pull up the bracket, we've got Cloud9 versus Counterlogic Gaming, as just stated, and Team Liquid versus Clutch on the other side of the bracket. Let's talk first about CLG and Cloud9. Oh, baby. PoE talked about it. He said, it's not going to be a fun series for me. He knows the jungler tension is coming mid. He knows Niski loves to play aggressive. And for me, that's really the crux of this matchup. You have the lowest deaths in the league mid laner in PoE going up the most kills in mid the league in mid laner. League. And it's about can PoE neutralize him? That's mm -hmm. where I think this matchup really lies. I mean, I think a big part of it is that a lot of the time, CLG does like to fall back on the Orianas in the mid lane, a little bit of a slower pace, whereas Cloud9 has shown that not only do they bust out innovative picks against very standard meta like the Veigar that we saw out of Niski, and even going to the Yasuo's, like, they will punish what you are going to bring out that you have shown the entire season long. So mm -hmm. CLG better be ready for Cloud9 to bring a lot of fire in the draft. I'm just excited to watch Sven Skaren play. He's, yeah. he's yeah. honestly played phenomenally. Like he's, if not the the front runner, like one of the front runners for MVP candidate of the season. Uh, definitely uh, one of the front runners. And he's he's earned it in all the games that I've seen. Like this guy is a premier playmaker and. Honestly, I'm just really excited to see him play. And I think what's so intriguing, too, uh, to your point, Mark, about, about the mid lane and needing to either neutralize Niski and or win that matchup for CLG, what they have at least shown us here today, and we've already talked about it, is the ability for, hey, if that mid lane matchup isn't going to be winnable for Power of Evil, it doesn't have to be. We can find our wins in the other lanes as long as Power of Evil can contain or minimize the effect that Niski has on the map. Equally true for C9, yeah. though. Last time it was Sneaky and Zazel dumpstering CLG's yeah. bot lane. Licorice is a god. So, like, both teams have so many threats. Yeah, I, I especially saw the last game recently, and I was like, wow, this bot lane turned <laughs> into a disaster. They got four-man dove, uh -huh. and then it was 20 CS deficit at, like, four minutes. Well, so. that's where you talk important to draft then, too, right, and securing yeah. the matchups. Reaper has long been touted as one of the more draft-focused uh, and draft-intelligent coaches uh, throughout uh, the LCS. I mean, there are some times where... Occasionally drop the, yeah. the ball. You always yeah, you everyone, know, you drop everyone. the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so can every single team. Exactly. Right? So it's not something new. All right, what about the other side of things? We're talking about the one seed in Team uh, Liquid looking to do what no other team has done before and put four titles together in a row. They have to go through Clutch to get that shot in the finals. It honestly looks like it would have to be a Cinderella story for Clutch Gaming to win this because you're up against, obviously, the toughest opponent in the entire league. And yes, there have been improving, but it looked like towards Game 4 yesterday that TSM actually could have given them a run for their money. And I don't think that barely being able to, or, or at least handedly beating that TSM if it wasn't a complete stomp, is good enough to beat TL. They should be used to the analyst desk doubting them, and there's going to be a lot more doubt <laughs> for hey, hey. gaming. I don't think there's a way that they beat TL. But That's the reality, knows? right? Yeah. Okay, so then what? You're really good <laughs> at the thought experiments because these oh. two aren't. So do the <laughs> mental gymnastics for me, Scar. How does Clutch beat Team Liquid? Oh, this is not. You don't, you don't want you, I, yet, I, no? I am not a specialist. Not, you're not flexible enough clutch, in the brain for this clutch one? Clutch gaming. I assumed they were going to make some statements. I was ready to play the reverse here. I, I live in reality. Right. Money is more valuable <laughs> than time. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so if anything, 
you got the picks from DeMonte and Tony yes. that are very new, yeah, right? Kiana, we got the yep. Kiana, the Rumbles really that beast. are really annoying to Ben in the first rotation for Team Liquid because champions like Yumi take a little bit of higher priority. And mm -hmm. so if the draft goes their way, they are able to maybe execute a few comps that get some one or two wins, and then they will always have to fall back on Cody's son. So can Cody's son outperform double lift? Oh, boy. That is actually how they will Call have to order. Win, which is crazy, which is why we don't think it... Uh Coach I, can win. I don't even think it's like an AD it matchup. You know, like I talked about Sven as like the, one of the front runners for MVP, but for me, it's just always been Core. When I watch Core play, I'm like, this guy's a this guy's a god. Mm -hmm. Like literally, like yeah, he's a, a lot of times like, I don't learn that much from watching specific games. When I watch Core play support, I feel like my brain is expanding. Like this yeah. guy <laughs> plays so well every game. He's legit hardcore carrying his team in ways that like people aren't even noticing, like great movement with a jungler, great vision control all across the map. He's always there at the right time. And like, you know, it's been a long time since Double had a support that he felt like he was like at a world-class level with. And now like that he has that support, there's just a monstrous bot lane. I don't yeah. know what to say. No doubt that Core JJ is a, uh, a phenomenal bot lane or support rather to uh, Double F's bot lane. If your brain's expanding though, you might want to see a doctor about that one. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Scar, for joining us here today to break down this very quick and dominant 3-0 from CLG. But now for myself, the cast is the entire live broadcast crew. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next weekend for the semifinals. Good night. In any of these tense matches, the people who really want it are the ones that rise to the occasion. DOD hasn't been to playoffs in the last two years. Optic never been to playoffs. If they lose here, their season is over, so tons on the line. Top side, though, it is ruined. So very close to dead. Having a flash away, the follow up is there, and first blood goes over to Medio. I'm CLG is collapsing. CLG by the power end of the game. Yeah, Sirius pushing me. They have to look out here. That's it. Sirius going to win. CLG are on the victory mark. If you play Sylvia and you have the, the Pizzadillary skin, like Snacky is with you, like for sure. Yeah, I actually have the power of Snacky. Here for Sneaky. Ruin's going to be in some trouble here. Issues the Hextech ultimatum. The Whirling Death came in, but the Strangle Thorns will find their victims. It's a double kill for Power of Evil. DLG have full control of the map. They are running this game. We got to get out here. We got to get out I'm here. Done. Yeah. Let's Air splash. Air splash. Nice, let's go. Arrows on the run, crowd is down, and that is it! Oh shit, I'm so fast. CLG are on match point versus Optic Gaming. They're looking for the 2v2, but Myofrost says, here you go! Oh. Stixay grabs himself the kill, the ace in the hole. Don't, don't, don't. I got midway. Don't, oh my god. Don't! Syndra starting things off with a scat of the week. There comes your juggle, there goes Optic Gaming! It has been a but CLG are headed to the semifinals.